I think what we have to remember, I mean, just to go away from Paula and Catherine, is that in 1985, Ingrid Christensen ran 2.21. So the women's world record has been tweaked very, very gradually over, what, 17 years. These sort of jumps in, in times in women's world record are due. It should be 2.16, 2.17 by now, and Paula's going to do it. So, so this is a long overdue improvement in the women's marathon world record. Yeah, the last time we saw something like this was Joan Samuelson in Boston in 1983. She took the record from like 225 down to 222. Every once in a while, every so many years, all of a sudden, the, somebody snaps something. And last year, the, the Naoko Takahashi, the Olympic champion from Japan, was the first woman seven day, eight days before Chicago in Berlin under 220. And that seemed to open the floodgates. What's Paula thinking right now? Because she no longer has anybody around her. She is running in solitude right now. You talked about that kind of funky head bod she has, but in terms of rhythm, it seems like she's running perfectly. Well, she's fine mechanically. She's very, very sound indeed. She's got this uh, physiotherapist over with her, Jared Hartman. She spent most of the last uh, six weeks with Jared Hartman. He's been staying with them up in Fonremer in the Pyrenees where they have an apartment, she and Gary. He's been up there for two stints of 10 days staying with them, uh, working on the baller, getting her balance right, making sure that it's, it's really about avoiding injuries, not treating them when they've arrived. And a lot of the work that Gerard does with her is upper body, not lower body, but to make sure that she stays relaxed in the upper body. And again, she looks like she's struggling sometimes, but it's totally deceptive. That's the way she always runs. That's just her style. And boy, if that's I'd, I'd be yeah, suffering right. too if I could. <laughs> in, I want to suffer like that. In her younger years, Paula here used to get a lot of injuries. She won the World Cross Country Championships as a junior in the snow, actually in Boston uh, in 1992. Then she was like gone for two or three years. She had a lot of injury problems. And, and even now people say they have to protect her from herself. She's an animal in training. But Gerard Hartman says she has a higher pain threshold than anybody he's ever known before. And Paula Radcliffe here has been protected by the people around her and she's got it exactly right because this is a huge performance for Paula. Paula Radcliffe, there's no question that she's going to win the LaSalle Bank Chicago Marathon, the 25th anniversary running. The question is, what is she going to do with regard to this world record? Because as we look at the time kind of ticking away, uh, it's just, a, it's not a matter of if anymore. It's just a matter of by how much. Well, she, she knows full well that she's on a career string right now. Her 5K and her 10K have been so overwhelmingly faster than she's ever run before. And remember, her early career was beset by staggering defeats at major championships at the world championships and the olympics where she did all the front running and then got beat and didn't even get medals and this year it's all been turned around and she sort of found herself but the confidence from all that disappointment early on is also added fuel to the record year she's having this year six weeks ago she slipped over in a, sorry three weeks ago she slipped over in a bathroom in london and uh, injured her right shin she had to miss four or five days of training big panic was she going to be able to make a make a right. okay to the start right. line in chicago and that probably actually held her back a little bit you know paula needs holding back she's like a like a greyhound in the blocks waiting to go well we can see her that the man who was like her guide throughout this race weldon johnson was like his brother last year robert is right. getting dropped at the last but i think weldon ran a little bit farther with paula this year than robert ran with Catherine last year it'll be interesting to see who comes in second place and just what that disparity of time is from where paula finished well right now the last we heard there was a 50 5 0 gap between Paula and Catherine in second place, which means if we're running 217.10 or so for Paula in front, we're still running under the old world record for Catherine in second place. And knowing her, she won't be disappointed with this day at all. She'll just congratulate the champion because she did what she wanted to do, which was run faster than she had last year. Well, and when you're beaten by a minute or more, then hey, fair square, you know, you have to say <laughs> good luck to yeah. you. But what we are seeing is, is a totally new level in women's marathon running being established here. You know, it's a, it's a big step up. Instead of five, ten seconds being tweaked away, you know, I, I suppose it was only a year ago, just over a year ago in Berlin, when Takahashi was the first woman under 220. Then Catherine, a week later, took the record down to 218. Now we're going to see it, I think, taken down to 217 by Paul. Well, there is an old standard in both sw the long, long standing sports like swimming and track and field that the men generally are 10 percent ahead of the women. And you can always you can tell the gap by that. But there's there's Paula. Hey, Linda Summer Smith is down there. and She's been watching uh, Paula Radcliffe do her thing for up coming up by 26 miles. Are you surprised by just how much she's going to win this thing? Linda? It's just absolutely incredible. I mean, I, it, it's unbelievable to watch it firsthand. She has looked good throughout this thing. I mean, it, at any point, it looked like she could have gone harder. Um, and, you know, she wasn't going to let the wind slow her down at all. And she's done all the work for the last 10 miles. Not even, you know, she's had somebody dead to her side, but she was the one in control of the pace. This was all hers. And it's just an absolutely incredible performance. 
she is a beautiful to watch. You know, a lot of people say things about her form, but <laughs> I think that she's absolutely beautiful. All right, Linda, thank you very much, and a great job by you today. And hey, yeah, who cares about the form as long as you cross the line first? That's the best form in the world if you've got to get your world record. And that's what it's looking like right now for Paula Radcliffe as she gets herself closer and closer to the finish line. Well, she's just going back to these men who are uh, past the men who are fading a little bit after going out a little bit too hard. She is, I mean, again, just like in London earlier this year, she is full of running as she nears the finish line. I mean, she's, she still hasn't quite got it all the way right, I think. In that well, sense, I think there's more left in this woman. I, th I think, well, she's running to a strong wind now. I mean, just looking at her mile splits, you know, she ran a 5.23 a couple of miles back. She's just gone to 25 miles with a 5.16. But the fact is that Paula Radcliffe doesn't believe in setting limits for herself. And she's run just about the perfect race here today, Tony. Condition's not perfect, by the way. You know, it's a little bit cold. Like it's Polite. a little bit windy. There's another half a minute or so take to, you can take off this just because of that. Yeah, after, I believe was talking about it. It could have been a low 205 day given the weather. So there's more to be taken out by this great champion from Great Britain, Paula Radcliffe in Chicago 2002. A whole lot of tellies are on across the pond in the United Kingdom as they get ready to celebrate the new queen of Chicago, Paula Radcliffe, the winner of the 2002 LaSalle Bank Chicago Marathon on the women's side. And this is exactly what a lot of folks expected to happen. Paula Radcliffe setting a new world record along the way. 2-17-18, unofficial. She's run negative split, too. Second half quicker. I mean, she went out really hard. A pace that destroyed uh, Jareba, destroyed Zakharova. We never saw Zakharova. She's a 2-22 runner. Destroyed Shibui. She's come back quicker. Mark is uh, down there at the finish line as Paula Radcliffe finishes her race. Let's send it down to Sapelsa right now. Mark? She's waving to the crowd. Paula Radcliffe. <laughs> the Brit with true grit. You are a world record time holder. Thank you. Oh, I'm so pleased the crowd is so great the whole way around. And hey, it's a great course. Tell me about the wind. Tell me about the pace. Uh, the wind is tough. Weldon did a brilliant job helping me out, telling me splits and things. So I didn't need to look at my eyes. And uh, I felt good. I went, went through the first half. And then uh, I just wanted to try and just run strong. The second half, I went through a bad stage, about 22, 23 miles. And then once I got to two miles to go on you, I was okay. The book <laughs> on you is that your finish would be the most difficult thing for you. Your kick, if you will. You took off and broke from that crowd well before you even had to make a kick. No, but I mean, I was, I was kicking hard at the end as well. And uh, I was having a little race with the guy, but he just got me at the finish. But um, yeah, no, I felt strong the last mile. What about the course itself? You said the people were helpful? Oh, the people were brilliant the whole way around. I ran in London in April, and I thought a British crowd Point the British girl, nothing can beat that. But they came close today, they were, they were great. Thank you, everyone. Your anti doping campaign, this can't do anything to harm it here. You said the publicity helps while you're running, you're going to lead the torch to try and continue that anti doping campaign. Tell me about that. Yeah, and it's, I think it's brilliant that Kerry and the Chicago guys have really led the field in marathon running by introducing blood testing before and after the event. So we're going in the right direction. You've had, the one, you've had the greatest year, one of the greatest years of any long-distance runner now. It's four or five straight races that you've won. Yeah. Uh, I'm just so pleased the way this year's gone. Everything has gone just from one race to the next brilliantly. So uh, thank God I, I get a holiday now. Congratulations, Paula Radcliffe, world record champion. Indeed, Mark Sapelsa. So thank you very much. We just saw Catherine Dureva cross the line. Uh, in, in second place in the That's time that it, I, I don't know. I don't know what she's going to feel about that. 21925. I think everyone got slowed those last two miles by that strong headwind, and that's when it really told. And there's two great champions, two tremendous champions. And Catherine Dereva has been so gracious in both victory and defeat. Uh, she's a, just a regal presence in the sport. And these are the only two women ever to go under 220 for a second time.